Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Always happy to visit with Tisa Strasser, who is an author and an all-around great person. So welcome. Thanks, Susie. It's great to be here. And you may have been reading about Love Never Fails, a novel based on truth. Tisa wrote that. And uh, interesting how that all came about. First of all, you kind of had an idea for a movie. So give me a little bit of background about the book itself. All right. About uh, 13 years ago, I was taking a creative writing class through my church and through Christian Leadership University. And I uh, came up with an awesome storyline. When the class was over, I booked, boxed everything up and put it away, <laughs> and God just would not let me forget it. He just kept reminding me and asking me to write the story. And because in the homework it was a script, I spent six year, years trying to create and and promote a script, a movie script, and um, it was about a year and a half ago that um, um, God showed me that, no, this is a book. (laughs) (laughs) It was uh, pretty mind boggling to me that I had spent all that time uh, going the wrong direction. But when you're following God, it it's never the wrong direction, right? <laughs> yeah, isn't it fun? Even he'll take our missteps and use those too, because he knows that that's all factored into his economy. Yeah. Yes, yes. And there's so many things that I cool things that I learned along the way through that process mm-hmm. of trying to write and promote the script that um, has made the book really, really, really good. Yeah. And good writing is always in the rewriting anyway. That's right. (laughs) So to go from that script format to a book format, that took some energy, right? Yeah. A little bit of work. And then um, I ended up putting lessons after each of the chapters and turning it into a Bible study for either personal or group study. And the lessons are topical studies. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance? Like, for instance, betrayal. Mm -hmm. Um, In the first chapter, the main character realizes that her father has withheld some really important information for a long time. She loves her dad. She's committed to her dad and is just devastated that to realize this, um, you know, that he has betrayed her in this way. So the lesson is about betrayal. We talk about scripture. We talk about um, Joseph being betrayed by his brothers, Mm -hmm. Jesus being betrayed by Joseph and David being betrayed by everyone. (laughs) And um, then I uh, took take the opportunity to turn it and say, okay, in your life, what things have have happened that would fall under this category? Have you been the betrayer? Have you been the one who has been betrayed? And what does scripture say about those things? And how would God have us react? Um, And then there's a challenge um, and a a dig deeper and, you know, in in the lessons. And um, Uh, There's 12 lessons, two for each of the six chapters. So did you have an idea of how you wanted this used as you were writing the book? Um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure, it's a great read for anybody, just a personal read and uh, use it in your own study time. But um, what I really had hoped was that um, it would catch on and be used in um, churches and pregnancy centers for um, group Bible studies. Um, when um, I, I created a, a leader's guide in the back to make that as easy as possible so that anyone would feel comfortable saying, okay, let's let's look at today's chapter and, and let's look at the lessons and have a group, uh, a list of questions, probing questions to get people talking and, and uh, just make it a growing experience together. Mm-hmm. What's fun is it's kind of like you can have a book club because mm-hmm. it's like reading a novel. It is a novel. It's a novel based mm-hmm. on truth. and yes. <laughs> But you can get your gang together, uh, maybe a small group, maybe a small group at your church, maybe a small group of friends, and all read this together. Yeah. and have a study from it. It's yes. it's very unique in that way. You've had great response from pregnancy centers and recently were featured in Pregnancy Help News. Tell me about that. Yeah, Heartbeat International um, contacted me and um, wanted me to um, talk with a, a freelance writer and to, uh, she created an article that is on in their online newsletter. Uh, called Pregnancy Help News. And um, um, it was crazy to open up this email <laughs> and see, you know, my my uh, that week's version of the newsletter. And there was my picture with the book and the whole thing. And uh, they did a great job. Yes. 
And from that, then you've once you write a book, everyone assumes you can speak. So yes. I know all <laughs> kinds of speaking opportunities seem to open up, and yeah. which you've been able to do as well. Time apart was recent, and I think you can share some important things with us about your time of sharing with those women. Yeah. Um, last weekend uh, was Time Apart, which is uh, an Assemblies of God annual women's conference. Mm-hmm. It was in Dublin, Ohio. Um, 800 women. Wow. It was just a fantastic uh, time. They had a main speaker who was very good, and she um, encouraged us all. The worship was wonderful. And um, I had a table with my books for sale. And um, it was probably six or seven weeks ago, they asked me, would I be one of the breakout speakers? Because they have, um, you know, three different time slots where you can choose what class you want to go to and they're smaller, more intimate, and you can choose your topics and all of that. So um, I agreed and um, really prayed and I felt like God gave me a great message to mm-hmm. take down there and share with the women. And there was about um, about 100 women that I got to share with and uh, probably a little over. But anyhow, and um, there was a great response. I think people were touched and um, I got... The, the leader of Time Apart knows my story a little bit, and she said, I want you to tell the story behind the story. Wow, wow. <laughs> so I did yeah. share the Love Never Fails story, and, mm-hmm. um, and in it I, I, I called the class Walking Out God's Calling, and always got to have a subtitle. So the sure. subtitle was Putting <laughs> Feet to His Vision for Your Ministry. I love it. And you had such a cute little handout with a very nice pedicure, I've got to <laughs> say uh, thanks to some very crafty friends <laughs> because i am um uh, not a crafty person but um they were very helpful to me and we created a little cardboard foot with it, uh scripture on it first corinthians one twenty six that says consider your calling mm-hmm. and on the back uh, i had a fill in the blank thing that says the calling that god wants me to walk out mm-hmm. so we had a uh, some serious prayer and some serious talk about you know are there things that God's been showing you that you've been hesitant to to fulfill and to, mm-hmm. to be vulnerable enough to uh, walk out? Well, let's talk about that today. Let's kind of unpeel that a little bit and some of the things that you shared, because I feel certain someone's listening right now that this is ringing true, thinking, okay, I, there's a calling. I've been hesitant. I've got all kinds of reasons why I shouldn't mm-hmm. logically pursue this. But I still feel this little nagging saying, this is really what God wants me to do. What would you say to that person? Okay. Uh, I'd say, I've been there, done that. (laughs) (laughs) There was six years between the uh, time I wrote the story and the time that I actually are um, in in that class Mm -hmm. when I wrote the storyline. And then when I actually said, oh, gosh, I really need to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, And three times God spoke to me and um, I finally said, okay. And so I do understand how, you know, the first time I thought, oh my gosh, that couldn't have been God. What, why would he have me do this? <laughs> the second time it was like, I've got four kids and a busy life. I, that couldn't have been God. And the third time it's like, no denying it. This is God. And mm-hmm. I, I need to do this. Yeah. And as bizarre as it seemed. <laughs> so you took them through, you kind of walked them through some steps on yes. how to identify that and then how to put feet to it. Yes. Share um, with us. Uh, I came up with 10 steps um, at, as far as walking out God's calling. And the first one, uh, at the risk of being obvious, is pray. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we tend to pray when God first starts to show us things, and then we pray when things get tough. Yes. And all the all the slots in between, we kind of go on autopilot and just do what seems right or what other people think we should do or what is logical. Um, and I just encourage the gals to stay on God pilot, not autopilot, mm. and just to continue to communicate with him every step of the way throughout the process of their project. What would be second? Second would be get the blessing of your spiritual coverings. Ooh. Um, I, you know, it's hard enough to fight the enemy when you're trying to do all this, but if you're fighting the um, people that are actually over you, mm-hmm. uh, perhaps your husband, your pastors, or your um, uh, ministry coverings, um, it, it's not 
doesn't work. Yeah. So um, God in- wants us to communicate with them, to have a mutual respect and appreciation for one another. And um, so uh, go to them, share your heart, get them in, in, involved in the process of, of deciding how and where to start. And, and um, things turn out a whole lot better. <laughs> Stay in the pocket. Yeah. 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 Okay. Number three. Um, get others praying with and for you. Um, I well, that goes along with those spiritual coverings as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. I created a little prayer team, went to, you know, made a list, prayed about it, come up with a list of people that would take it to heart mm-hmm. that really had, um, you know, there's a real strong pro-life message in the book. And, you know, some of the people that I uh, approached were at the pregnancy center and just said, you know, I, I really believe God wants this message of healing to reach a lot of people. So, um, you know, would you pray for me as yes. I, I embark on this project? And um, then I send them email updates on a regular basis and just keep them up to date. It's good to have a team. Yes, it is. What would we do next? Ah, uh, remind yourself of the times that God has been faithful in the past. That's scriptural. Uh, that is so scriptural. And it also helps. Yeah. Um, David did that. It says mm-hmm. that he strengthened himself in the Lord and I suspect that when uh, part of what David did is he worshiped because that's he was a worshiper. But um, when David, everyone had turned against him and he was alone and Saul wanted him to take his life. Um, he strengthened himself in the Lord. Uh, and one of the ways I believe he did so was that he remembered. He remembered holding that sling in his hand and seeing Goliath fall. Mm-hmm. He remembered when the lion attacked his sheep. And God gave him the strength to defeat the lions. So um, I just encourage people to write down when God moves and remember. And when you're facing discouragement or can't see how God is really going to do what you hope he wants will do, then you have um, it just strengthens you to remember what he's done in the past. What a good idea to write that down as Mm -hmm. it's happening and then have something physical to go to. Mm -hmm. Just to remind ourselves how faithful God has been time and time and time again. I use note cards. (laughs) Really smart. It's really So smart. Okay, so you've got a really good foundation here. What do we do next? Okay. Um, Learn from the best. Mm -hmm. Just to, you know, I encourage the gals that whatever things you were, uh, you feel like God is wanting you to do, be it to start a library at your church or maybe a soup kitchen or you know, who knows what you might, um, he might put in your heart. Someone else has done that and someone else has done it well. And to find the person that's done it well and go and pick their brain. Nice. And along those same lines, just talk to everybody, you know, Mm -hmm. about it. And you'll be surprised that, um, perhaps you'll be out at dinner with your husband and another couple and you'll, you know, share what's on your heart. And, some the your friend will say, "Oh, my aunt did that at her church," and and get her aunt's number, get her aunt's name, and mm-hmm. and say, "Hey, call her and say, hey, can I pick your brain? What worked? What didn't work? Don't reinvent the wheel." Yeah. Oh, so smart. Okay, <laughs> and then, um, be thick-skinned. <laughs> yes. Well, particularly if you're writing a book. Yes. Because they're. The rejection letters are a part of that process. Yes, unfortunately. (laughs) Sure. Um, You know, there's going to be a lot of people who are negative. Not everyone's going to be, you know, thrilled about whatever you're saying you're doing. And, you know, you need to learn to discern between the people that are just plain negative and the people that the enemy is using to discourage you and the people that God's bringing to you with great ideas. Mm Mm-hmm. That, you know, perhaps weren't exactly what you were thinking, but man, it makes sense. It's uh, And you can reject them and say, well, no, you know, God gave me this vision, blah, blah, blah. Or you can listen to them and let God use them to refine you and your project. Mm, that's good. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Okay, you've got about three more. Quickly. Yeah, remember that you're in a spiritual battle. Of course. Put on your armor yes. of God. Stand on the word. Yes. Use the spirit. Um, just... Uh, Don't be afraid to stomp on the ground and say, no, Satan, you're not going to win this one. This is our victory. Mm -hmm. Um, The third one is don't give up. Or the -hmm. the ninth one is Mm -hmm. don't give up. Um, I talk a little bit about there at um, 
the story of Saul in 1 Samuel 9, Mm -hmm. where his dad sends him to go find the donkeys, the lost donkeys. And he roams around for days, and he's um, uh, going, they're hungry, they've lost a out of food, and they d- discover that they're close to where Samuel lives. And they think, well, maybe Samuel can use his prophetic stuff to help us find these donkeys. Mm-hmm. And he does. Mm-hmm. But he also then anoints Samuel, or Saul, to be the first king of yes. Israel. Yes. So the, the, the thought then is that when we're doing all these mundane, everyday things that seem like they don't matter, like we're chasing donkeys, you know, we're changing diapers or we're <laughs> washing dishes for the 17th time that week, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's, if we're faithful in doing the things that we're supposed to do, sometimes we end up getting right in the right place at the right time yeah. to receive our calling, to receive our blessing and in our anointing, just like Saul did. You know, so he was ended up right in front of Samuel. Love that. Okay, so, and finally. All right, the last one is don't forget that the work that God is doing in your heart through this process is very important too. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're not the same people at the end of a project that we were at the beginning. Um, God refines us and molds us and speaks to us. And I know that I am uh, thicker skinned mm-hmm. and I am... Um, more confident in my walk with God. Mm -hmm. I hear him more clearly Mm. and um, I trust him so much more because of the process. So don't uh, look down on the process and want to happen, want it to happen right away. Enjoy the journey too. Mm. Because it's refining us at the same time. Yes. So good. We are visiting with Tisa Strasser. She's author of Love Never Fails, a novel based on truth. Going to take a short break here. We'll be back after these words. You're listening to Our Community.